Hi everybody, this is Jason, the Science Outreach Manager and Life Science Educator here at the Children's Museum Houston. Today I'm at the math cart to talk about sports math. And the reason why I want to talk about sports math is when I was young, I had a lot of struggles with math. I wasn't very good at it and it was a sore spot with me because I was really good at all my other subjects but just math I wasn't good at. And it wasn't until my dad and I sort of worked together on the statistics of sports that I started really understanding how math works. So we would get out the newspaper way back when, when we used newspapers, look at the baseball games and say like, okay, this so-and-so Dodger or this so-and-so Astro or this so-and-so Pirate, they hit one for four today or two for six today or three for five or whatever. And then my dad wouldn't let me see the result. He would have me do the math. So I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing because if you enjoy this as much as I do, you'll get really good at math really quickly. You'll get good at arithmetic, percentages, statistics, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at these sheets of paper down here. I have right here first how to do some baseball statistics. This here, of course, is Houston Astro Jose Altuve, one of the best Astros to ever play the sport. And what I did was is I took a four game series of his. So you'll see it's game one, game two, game three, game four. So in game one, he went one for four. If you go one for four, and you can actually use these uh, craft sticks if you want to sort of see it. If he went one for four, out of all the times he was at bat, he got one hit. So that's 25% of them, which comes out to a 250 average. Then the next time though, he was one for three. He still took two away, but his average got better because it's one third of three, which is a 333%. Then the next game, he was actually two for five. So we put five up here. We take the three away. This is a really good percent. He's 400. And then the last game, he was two for four, which is a 500%. So right there, you can see how you can take fractions, turn them into percents pretty easily. Just divide one divided by four, one divided by three, two divided by five, two divided by four. You can learn to reduce fractions. Two to four can be one half, okay? And then you take the three, the four games, and you add up all the hits he got. So one and one is two, and two is four, and two is six. And all the at-bats, four and three is seven, seven and five is 12, 12 and four is 16. And so the average of four games is, you added these numbers, you added these numbers, he was six for 16. So he batted 375 for those four games which is really good. 375 is a very, very good average. Now I'm over here doing football. Some of you may not like baseball, you like football more. So here's how you can do some math in football. Patrick Mahomes, one of the best quarterbacks there is right now. What we're gonna do right here is show how his average yards per game out of four games. So in game one, he had 416 yards. Game two, he had 372 yards. Game three, he had 348 yards. And then in game four, he had 462 yards. Now to get the average of those four, you would add them all together. 416 plus 375 plus 348 plus 462, and you get 1,598 yards. Then you divide it by how many games? Divide it by four, he averaged 399.5 yards per game. So what you can do is you can actually figure out the yards per game for his entire season last year by looking at his game stats and adding up all those numbers and dividing it by how many games he played. So that's another way you can learn math through sports. Let's finally come on over to our basketball one with now the um, champion Giannis Antetokounmpo. What we have here, basketball has so many stats. So what I did right here out of the four games was how many times he went to the free throw line and his free throw percentages. So in baseball, you might get five at bats, six at bats. Sometimes when it comes to three throws, you might get 20, 25 three throws. So the numbers get a little bit different. So in one game, he was six for eight. If you did reduce that, it's three for four, which is 750. In game two, he was seven for 15. You can't reduce that, but that's a 467 average. In game three, he was eight for 13. Again, you can't reduce that, which is a 615 average. And then he was three for five in game four, which was a 600 average. And you do the same thing as you did with the baseball. 
You take all these numbers here, add them up, you get 24. You take all these numbers here, add them up, you get 41, divide them out. And for that four game average, he was throwing a 585 free throw attempt or free throw percentage per attempt. So right there, that's how you can do basketball. So there's so many stats you can do. You can do their average home run per season for baseball. You can do their average touchdowns thrown for football or passing uh, yards or rushing yards or receiving yards. And in basketball, there's so many. You can do the free throw percent, the three point percent. You can do just regular field goal percents, assists per game, rebounds per game, all that good stuff. And then you can get into higher math by doing here. So this was a way I learned how to do math and learn to appreciate math. And maybe it's a way that some of you would learn how to appreciate math more. With that, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button so that you can see all of our different videos for math, science, Mr. O, our tater tot tot tunes, story times, all that good stuff. Plus, if you're doing this statistical work at home and you put it on a piece of paper, take a picture of that piece of paper, post it on our social media. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Twitter. I hope you're all having a great summer. I hope to see you at the museum soon. We are open and I hope you're having a great day. See you later for now.